I've got here one of these LED lamps which doesn't work and I'm not as organized as Clive of course but uh, I'm gonna plug it in it doesn't seem to be working so we'll see if we can get it to work oh it works now temperamental thing I didn't expect that What's the current on the flaming thing? Just have a look here. Oh, I was expecting it not to work, but let it run for you all. 235 volts, 70 milliampere. Power factor is 0.63. Weird. This is one of these color changing lamps, LED ones, but it's not working as it's supposed to be. It's very dim. And it's supposed to have all the colors, but it's uh, it looks dullish blue. It only does green and red. Current is well, less than 10 milliamps anyway. I'm going to take it apart see what the problem is. Yeah, green coming up now. Really dull. And yeah, not too spectacular to be honest. I'm not sure if Clive has played this one of those, but um, the current shows zero ampere, power factor zero, so it's zero watts. So it draws power from a yeah, polycapacitor or something, it's gone faulty. So we're going to take it apart and see what we can find. So this lamp is from 2005, 15, 12, 2005. So we're going to open this, um, pretty tough spinning, oh, yeah. and glued, and some LEDs in here like this, 1, 2, 3, it's about 15, CE compliance, now we need to see how we open this part up, right, get a screwdriver in here, Color. Clive is the expert in opening this with one hand. I don't know how he does it, but he is quite good in it. So we got the LED cluster, four wires, driver wires, because it's for the multicolor option. So we need to get this little thing out here. Another circuit board in here. How do we get that out? Could we still charge on the main capacitor? There's a screwy threaded piece in here. Let me make this move. Oh, yeah, it's coming out. It's probably best fitted somehow. Try not to stab myself on camera, that's not really too clever. Oh, there we go. So this is, ah, there we go, jackpot. Capacitor, crystal oscillator. I'll have a closer look at this shortly. To see, but there's a bridge rectifier in here, and I'm gonna decide. Uh, I'll put 12 volts, that's the positive side, and there's the negative side. The capacitor is 50 volts. I think the voltage is lower. I ramp it up from a power supply and put the DC on the on the capacitor and see if we get a better reading. I think it could be the Zena is there, could have gone faulty, or these series droppers. They appear, appear to be in parallel. That's a 474 and this is a 473. So there's a certain amount of dropping for the voltage. So if we're going to try this out, I'll get 12 volts on there. We'll see what happens. Okay, we're going to energize the device and see what's going to happen. Anything? Oh, the lights are glowing. Oh, very dim. 8 volts, we get it up a bit, 12 volts. Fifteen volts. The oscillator is not starting somehow. A little bit higher. 
there we go, 18 volts. The downstream part is working. I don't see the colours yellow and the other colours in between. They haven't shown up yet. Go a bit higher. on and see if that diffuses a bit better. Yeah, the diffuser is essential to get the milk color. Cyan, green. I'm sure it had yellow at one stage, these lamps. Yellow, yeah, there we go. Orange, red, Purple. So the diffuser is essential to get the intermediate colors on this thing. So I run it now on um, direct on the capacitor. So the problem is that the inrush component voltage is just under 20 volts. I think this blue inline resistor that was sold behind here that had failed. I think the readings were not consistent, so I'll put another 10 ohm resistor in series. And uh, that is just the inrush current limiter, and we'll see if that's gonna work. Yeah, I'm gonna plug it in and see if it works. No one home. Still dim. Might be the capacitors. Oh, it's maybe. Still very low current. Just disconnected this blue thing that's across the terminals. I have no idea what it does, but uh, it looks like an, uh, a virus type thing or something. I've taken it off so see if that makes a difference. That's off. No, it doesn't make any difference. Plug safety first, de energized device. 100 puff capacitor measures all right, 100 puff, so it's not a problem there. Well, I'm gonna give it another test. I put a six, uh, 68 ohm, I put a 680 puff new capacitor in there, or 0 0.68 micro or 680 nano instead of the other two capacitors. They were those and they were faulty. Um, we're gonna turn it on and we'll see if it works. Are we gonna puff of smoke or not? device, see what happens. It looks a lot brighter. Turn the lights off. I think I fixed it. Yep, it was the capacitor, the main capacitor was faulty. We got a 50 milliampere going through there now. Dodgy capacitors. Interesting. The current, 50 milliampere. That's three volts. I think they were rated. I can't remember what the rating was of the lamps, but it seems to be working fine now. Oh, that was a problem with these things. The main capacitor has gone faulty.
This must have been a mod for the manufacturer. 474, so that's 417 now. now. And there's another one in parallel. And this thing. Uh, 473, and they're parallel to that, but these bars have failed. I have another one of these lamps, and it's, it's the same bloody problem, but the crystal has fallen off. So I can't fix that at the moment. I lost the crystal. Bought these lamps many years ago for our kids, and uh, they were called the last about a year and a half, two years, and they ended up in the spare pile, and now I have a bit of time to dick around with these things. So I'm going to put this one together, and see how long it's going to last. So I'll put a 680... Uh, nano in uh, 630 volts instead of 400 volts. So again, those capacitors should be reading around uh, 470 nano, and they're reading only 99 nano. That was how uh, the lamp was so dim, so I fixed that. Perfect. All right, final smoke test. Light off and see if she works. And light off. And I glue it together still, got it on the bulb, got it all tucked in there. 68 ohm series resistor instead of 10. 680 nanofarad capacitor. And it's working fine. Nice, nice, nice. The current hasn't changed much, it's still on 50 milliampere. Definitely. Fought me till the last end. One of these pins had come out as well from the bayonet, so I soldered a copper strand in there. And uh, yeah, hopefully, I'll test it now and see if she works. Welcome back to the weekend collector. Thanks for your time this afternoon. I'll be back again uh, this, this time tomorrow from 3 till 6. Uh, got a great show lined up for tomorrow. Of course, we're having politics from 3 o'clock. Nikki Bazand is joining us for the health hub. Well, you actually hope one of the things we might be talking about with Nikki is just how to keep yourself healthy when you're suffering from a broken heart. A uh, story about Lord. <laughs> So here we have the diagram, so R1 used to be 10 ohms, I put a 68 in there. That used to be these two dodgy capacitors in parallel, 520 nano, so I changed it to 680 at 680 volts. Standard brakes to rectifier, capacitor C200 puff that was reading well. The blue thing was a type of MOV, xenodiode for 18 volts. It's a little regulator on the board and then you got downstream a circuit with an unmarked IC. Three little transistors which drive the LEDs and a couple of resistors. So on the label which was on there it was a 4 watt uh, red, green, blue LED lamp with multi-color so yeah.